On the podcast today, we are going to dissect chapter 16 of the Tao Te Ching, which makes up the 16th episode of the 81 Meditations on the Tao Te Ching. And as usual, Guyang will read the Jia Fu Feng and Jane English translation, and I will read the Derek Lin translation. Empty yourself of everything. Let the mind become still. The 10,000 things rise and fall while the self watches their return. They grow and flourish and then return to the source. Returning to the source is stillness, which is the way of nature. The way of nature is unchanging. Knowing constancy is insight. Not knowing constancy leads to disaster. Knowing constancy, the mind is open. With an open mind, you will be open-hearted. Being open-hearted, you will act royally. Being royal, you will attain the divine. Being divine, you will be at one with the Tao. Being at one with the Tao is eternal. And though the body dies, the Tao will never pass away. And Derek's translation, Attain the ultimate emptiness. Hold on to the truest tranquility. The myriad things are all active. I therefore watch their return. Everything flourishes. Each returns to its roots. Returning to the root is called tranquility. Tranquility is called returning to one's nature. Returning to one's nature is called constancy. Knowing constancy is called clarity. Not knowing constancy, one recklessly causes trouble. Knowing constancy is acceptance. Acceptance is impartiality. Impartiality is sovereign. Sovereign is heaven. Heaven is Tao. Tao is eternal. The self is no more without danger. And so this chapter is one of the best chapters in the Tao Te Ching actually and is is very important for especially people a serious spiritual practitioner and, and a contemplative person because it dives into this progression we go through in, in our spiritual path into uh, how to emulate the sages or to emulate the Tao to live like the Tao yes and so we have kind of this four-tiered progression through this chapter from knowing acceptance impartiality and sovereignty mm. Sovereignty here. Don't kind of think of about sort of being sovereign as like living off grid. This is more of a sovereign sort of authentic, authentic power. Mm. When the power one attains when they are in accord with the Tao. As an individual. Yeah, as an individual. As an individual, you fully became one with the Tao. That's yes. when you have a full sovereignty. That's right. Mm. That's right. That's what it is. It is about. So we have this four-tiered process in this chapter. Yeah, I think uh, in the first couple of lines, empty yourself of everything and let the mind become still. That again, the stillness is something, uh, it's very important in practicing in this spiritual path. In, and not only the other chain, Buddhism and also uh, Neo Confucianism as well, so how important to uh, just stare at suchness. Hmm. Just stare at the things, uh, rise and falls, and that itself is, again, the way of nature, isn't it? And um, once you find that stillness, the complete silence, which is uh, kind of, uh, again, returning the universal truth, returning the faith of the universe, which hmm. is faith of our own nature as well. Yes. Well, stillness here also represents, na nature is stillness, right? So... We are a representation of nature, but we are often out of accord with that stillness nature of nature itself, right? And that eclipses our ability to know the Tao and to return to the source, as you said, the you know, returning to the ultimate essence of the universe. Yes. So when we have a mind completely full, our mind cup is full, there's no chance for us to emulate the Tao or to be as nature is. And nature is stillness. Yes. And so the sage they observe the stillness of nature and in, in the observation of the stillness of nature you actually become aware of the stillness within your own self as your nature yes again we often talk about how um, nature always seeks balance that balance we talk about a lot in uh, reading Tao Te Ching as well but in saying that nature is already in balance doesn't really s s and put any action to find the balance. Nature itself, universe itself, is already in balance. So, job for us to 
do is to be in that balance as well for as an individual, as a human being. But like you said, our cups are too full with the too much stuff basically mm. Mm. so that um, we need to do something to find that balance but, but again to get back to that balance with stillness is is from having that open heartedness that just the empty cup that's empty yes yeah the, the impartiality right that's the aspect of this chapter is that openness is impartiality the Tao is impartial the Tao loves and nourishes all but does not lord it over them. The Taoism is not some sort of monarchical religion like we find in the Abrahamic faiths where God will favor their believers and, and you know condemn the non-believers and so forth and so on. It's not like that. It, it loves and nourishes all but does not lord it over them. And so uh, from that perspective, <clears throat> you are open-hearted if you embody that and you are impartial then. So you have an impartial perspective of the world because... <laughs> You don't have a subjective view anymore. It, your, your view is objective. And that's why this progression in the chapter from knowing to acceptance to impartiality is this, and, and then to sovereignty is this process of opening one's heart to see the world as it truly is in its, in its pure impartial nature. Humans create partiality. Yes. That's the problem, right? Mm. So... The human mind is the problem. We create the partiality. We create left and right, right and wrong, you know, so forth and so on, to suit our own personal agendas and our own subjective viewpoint. Yeah, I mean, I love this chapter, but um, the one key part I really like is this one. Uh, uh, yeah, fourth line. Yep. They grow and flourish and then return to the source. Yes. So... 10,000 things are rise and falls. They grow and flourish, right? Yep. Becoming and dis disappearing. Yes. But they all return to the source, which yep. is the Tao. Yeah. But often we forget the later part. They all return to the Tao, the mm -hmm. source. The source, right? yeah, yeah. We only pay too much attention to what's becoming and um, disappearing, what's growing and flourishing. I think that's when we have... Um, this um, tendency to care too much about little things, like you said before. Yep. Like too much we are uh, engaged with our own mind, what they like and what they dislike, yep. right? Yep. Completely forgetting all these things will end yeah. in the end. In the end, yeah. Right? So I think key part is to always to remember all things will go back to the source. Mm, and mm. that is what? That is just a law of the universe, a law of nature, law of the Tao, yeah, right? Yeah. Because we often forget that fact. That's why we care too much. We become too attached to what we think, mm. what's right or wrong, mm. or what they like and what they dislike, yeah, right? Yeah. But again, at the end of the day, everything will go back to where it should go back to. So what, whatever we... Having such opinion over something really doesn't matter in the end mm. because everything rises and falls. Everything becomes and dis uh, disappear. Yeah. Rumi had a beautiful poem uh, about this world that for drunkards. I can't remember the name of the poem, but he, was, he said, talking about returning to the source and, and death, that what brought me here shall take me home. And so this, what we're speaking, what you're speaking about specifically is the knowing aspect of this progression. You see, like, so when you have this clarity, this awareness that from where we came, we must return without getting caught in the drama in, in the intermediary, that's where you start to know the Tao. And that's what opens you up. This is what constancy is, right? This is why, why Lao Tzu says, Knowing constancy is clarity. Yes. So if you know the constancy, and the constancy here is the Tao, it's the eternal Tao. That's our nature, all of our nature, and we will return to that. That's where we came from. Mm. Can we describe that in detail? No, we can't. We can only use clumsy human words like eternity and Tao and these words to kind of indicate to what we are talking about. We can't give an accurate description of that. You would have to be it in its totality, which we are not in a human form. And so 
what you were talking about is is the knowing aspect we need to know and yeah. remember if we don't remember then we get caught in the human drama and then once you're caught in the human drama what happens you forget mm. you forget and mm. that's why Lao Tzu says not knowing constancy <clears throat> One recklessly causes trouble. Yes. <laughs> Let's have a look at the world. Well, that's it. I mean, not knowing constancy leads to disaster. Yep. That's exactly it. I that's mean, the world, right? Right at this minute. Not just right this minute, <laughs> but always. I should say we always over-exaggerate our own current zeitgeist. But usually every generation has some sort of problems in the, in the society, Right. And that comes from not knowing constancy. Yes. If we all knew constancy, if we knew the Tao, mm. we would behave very differently. Mm. We wouldn't have these artificial forms of separation that develop in the world. They just wouldn't exist. And if they did exist, then people would have a different sort of relationship to them. They wouldn't be so fervent in their hatred to the opposition. Mm. There would be more of an acceptance and an understanding of the opposition. Yeah, knowing that truth, which is everything goes back to the source, will make our mm, like a public debate much healthier, I think, right? Because knowing the truth that everything will arise and fall, mm. then there's no need for really heated argument over something that's really, really, at the end of the day, don't matter. And would there even be debate? Who knows? Exactly. We, we might end up being like uh, having the Japanese tendency of avoiding debate and taking friendship first always, which is, their, which is actually a fundamental Eastern psychology, actually, mm. of avoiding debate. And it's not, mean, not meaning that you're avoiding trying to you know, nut out a situation. It means that you always take friendship first. And this is where the West don't understand it, right? Because when the West debate, they always must have a winner or loser. Mm. And they lack the foresight to understand that you just don't accept people think differently. And that's the big problem, right? It's particularly in America, people just don't accept that people think differently. And that's actually a beautiful thing. The problem is, is when you think that you can force the opposition to think the way that you think, you have to just, you have to just realize some people's minds are made up. Mm. And that's what the Japanese realize. That sometimes people's minds are made up. So... What's the best course of medicine? Friendship first. Yes. Always friendship first, not debate. And actually, that would be the Taoist mentality. Lao Tzu could care less about having a debate with Confucius. That's why he left society. He's like, look at this idiot. I'm out. Like, I'm not sleeping a certain way to, to justify his own philosophy and so forth and so on. It's a never-ending cycle debating with the ration, rational, rationality versus rationality, mm. really. Mm. is. I mean, uh, you're right, I'm, uh, you're wrong, I'm right. It endless cycle of that instead of um, once you know that um, you two are at the end uh, in a good friendship and whatever you are debating on is actually a very small thing, then you soon realize how... Um, ridiculous that <laughs> yeah. the process of debating was. Exactly. Mm. You have to accept each other, right? Yes. have to accept each other. And that's why in this process, knowing leads into acceptance. So an acceptance of life, yes. an acceptance of the way of the Tao. Yes. Because you realize from the stillness of nature, as you said, actually, that's the way. Like, there's many things that we can debate about. But what we can all agree upon it's when you're in nature and you silence your mind and you experience that stillness, you start to feel some sort of connection to something much greater than yourself. And we can all agree upon that. Yes. And that's why Taoism is a natural methodology. It's mm. based on nature. Yes. And so then once you have that knowing, there's an acceptance of the world as the way it is, mm. as opposed to fighting the world and mm. being opinionated and, and debating with people and so forth. And that acceptance itself is you in the process of you become one with the Tao, right? Yes. You are allowing, inviting Tao to take over you and let that work it out itself, yes. basically. Yes. That is acceptance. Exactly. Mm. That's right. That's, that's the perfect acceptance because once you allow it to come into your life and you stop fighting the current of the river, that's when you, as we mentioned earlier, impartiality begins to develop. Mm. 
because you've accepted the Tao as it is. And then once you've accepted it to come into your life, then you do see the world in an impartial way, without subjectivity and without partiality. And so you're, you are free from the hypnosis of your own mind and the hypnosis of your own culture and your country, and et cetera. Yes. And that's where you actually gain great power from that place. Yeah, and the thing here is uh, with that uh, like acceptance side of it, saying yeah, with an open mind, you will be open-hearted. Mm. Being open-hearted, you will act royally yeah. that will be what was the after? sovereign 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 yes, yeah. yes you'll be sovereign yeah. you'll be sovereign yes. you'll have that authentic power authentic power yes that's right so what we're kind of talking about here then is duh <coughs> aren't we we're talking about duh you would have the virtue or the yeah. non-virtuous virtue of the Tao. right because you are open-hearted you've allowed the Tao to come into your life and it, it is the river analogy mm -hmm. once you stop holding onto the banks of the river and stop fighting the current of the river and you let the river take you wherever you need to be the river's power becomes your power mm -hmm. that's what dirt is yes and so you can also relate dirt to charisma mm -hmm. you know as well you know if someone's very charismatic not in, in an intentional way but naturally charismatic yeah. then that can be also the duh, that can be the, the virtue because someone who is naturally charismatic can draw people into them. That's the power of the Tao. Mm -hmm. You know, a sage experiences this, right? A sage can empty themselves completely and without advertising, they draw followers to them, you know, or they, or they draw people who are interested in their teachings. Yes, yes. You know, that's the power of the Tao. Mm. And so that's what we're kind of talking about when we, when we accept and we have the impartial view, we gain that sovereign power in life, mm. that authentic power. And it comes from acting naturally in accordance with your own nature. See, that's the problem in the modern world, right? The modern world are so influenced by the culture that they live in. They're so influenced by the media and the government Half the time when you talk to people, especially in the modern day, you are not getting who they are from the conversation. You are getting a copy of who they are based on the media and the government, and they just regurgitate the same information a lot of the time. And this is what did Lao Tzu's head in, in, in the Warren States period and why he left, because people were regurgitating the Confucian philosophy and the, the way of Confucianism, Confucianism, the lifestyle and so forth and so on. He's like, I'm out. Like, because I'm not really, you're not speaking to me from your true nature. Mm. You're speaking to me through an artificial construct you've embedded in your mind. And I think that's what um, obstructs people to have a genuine relationship with one another, I think. Yes. Because we all are heavily exposed to um, too much information, whether they are right or wrong information. And uh, those information seem to kind of dictate where we think a lot, especially nowadays. And I see that a lot, especially the younger generation people. The reason why is because with the older generation, they've had kind of enough time to contemplate on their own life or they've had a certain life circumstance they had to go through. And again... In older generation, when they were younger, they had much less things. Yep. For example, like nowadays, young people wouldn't even be able to imagine how the life is like without computer, without internet at all, right? Without the mobile phone. But we grow up like that for freedom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we've had so much time to. Like run around in nature, yeah, just sure. just roam around aimlessly, yeah. right? Yeah. Just uh, playing with um, friends and climb the trees and swim in the river. This kind of um, really life that's really in touch with nature, mm. meaning that you are also in touch with your own feelings, your yeah. own intuitive mind, right? Yeah. Yeah. That kind of gives you opportunity to kind of build your own like a healthy thoughts yeah. i think yeah. your healthy way of thinking of yourself even like knowing yourself in a proper way instead of 
uh, you let information to dictate way you think. Yep. So you make decision on that. Then if there is some sort of a counter argument, and they change their <laughs> attitude yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like like nothing, like, nothing, like flip yeah. of the coin yeah. kind of thing. That's why we had to find uh, uh, where is this person stand really, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. how to communicate sometimes. So that's what's really actually said nowadays, that people are very busy and they're constantly exposed to too many information. So they basically have no time to have a real deep contemplation on themselves and their life. No. They're very sensible to the outside information, but they're very desensitized with their own self, right? They're completely out of touch, mm. which is a big problem. The older generation had space. See, they had space mm. in their life. As you said, they weren't bombarded with information. They weren't stuck to the, the idiot phone all day, you know, scrolling unnecessary knowledge and, you know, basically just rubbish 24 hours a day on the idiot phone and so they had space in their life right they had space in their life and that's that space is imperative to understand yourself and to kind of observe yourself and your thoughts and so forth and so on you experience things like boredom and and all of this where the younger generation they probably do experience boredom right but they they keep filling it up full of unnecessary garbage that they find on the idiot phone or on the computer and so forth and so on. And so you have this constant filling of the mind cup, yeah. as, as Lao Tzu and Zhuangzi would talk about. And so once that mind cup is overflowing, full of information, there's no way you could know yourself. It's, a, it's an impossibility. It's too full. It's too full. Mm-hmm. And so then you begin to act from the information you've acquired mm. Because you may have agreed with the information you heard or so forth and so on. But imagine if you didn't hear the information. How would you respond to certain situations? People are so tuned in these days to the social media that they just regurgitate what they hear on social media without having any sort of critical thinking skills and whether some sort of information is healthy to take on board or not, right? And so... Back in the older generations, our parents' generations, for example, and our grandparents, the only information you would, they would have probably got was from the newspaper and news on the television. Yes. You know, that would conflict with their current worldview, right? Uh, but as Bill Hicks would say, even in his time, he would watch the news and it would be all of this chaos going on and then you'd open up the window and there's just tweet, 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 just a bird <laughs> tweeting. So, you know... You've got to be very discerning with what the world, the media organizations and the government are trying to tell you because they're trying to keep you in a state of fear. They're trying to reel your mind full of anxiety from uh, overflowing with information. We have to think about information also as, as energy, right? Like we don't think about it as energy because just as food and, and beverage is energy that we consume, if you have too much of that, you become obese, you, you become out of balance with your nature same with information. Information is, is energy that you take in through your eyes and ears. So if you consume too much information, you can be overweight, so to speak, in your mind. Your mind cup can be too full and you're not speaking from your authentic self, yes. that natural state. And so you have no sovereign power. You have no authenticity. Exactly. I mean, this thing we talk a lot about privately, mm. how people don't live by principles nowadays. Yep. Even the principle, like a word principle itself is having some sort of value. Mm-hmm. Value in life, like uh, what you live by, yep. what you value truly, mm-hmm. right? So even how, how, do, how do we get to build those values? Mm-hmm. That is coming from having, like you said, space. Space. Having really like quality time on ourselves especially i think in our in the childhood hmm. days i think that actually very important yep. that you actually have a quality time uh, with family and friends in nature hmm. and enjoy that space with one another yep. in that way we get to learn real value on life hmm. real value of being a human being hmm. understanding one another 
and <clears throat> being an authentic um, individual and being a genuine person, right? 100%, yeah. But nowadays, I don't know, like we see like even... <laughs> Like it looks like a less than a year old baby on the phone and then Prem, right? Playing Terrible. cartoon. Um, yeah. Terrible. <laughs> like, which is, uh, I often kind of just uh, imagine and fantasize how that child's um, life will be like, you know, later on. Mm. If you were so close to the screens in such a young age, right? Then will that sort of life produce any kind of um, values, principle? I hope, I hope they do have those values in life because then you get to have a healthy judgment of uh, what you should uh, um, pay attention to and what you shouldn't, yeah. right? <coughs> yeah. And those um, principles is, I mean, dying. And in the spiritual path, to live principally is to understand the Tao and to live by that, un- the knowing of constancy. This is my principle. What's your principle in life? Well, I understand that humanity is fundamentally one. We are actually all one consciousness. Mm. We are experiencing the world subjectively and we get caught up in our own worldly drama, Maya. But Brahman alone or Tao alone exists. Yeah. That's my principle. So I live principally. So when you are trying to be divisive in this and that, I, I call BS because... The principle of life is only the Tao. And you're trying to create this artificial divisive system mm. and you're spreading that sort of toxicity, that sort of information to innocent minds mm. who are not aware of what's happening. And then you're creating people who are very opinionated and, and dogmatic in no matter whatever it is that they believe in. And so... Because I live with principles, I don't accept that. Yes. It's, for me, I can just say no to your BS. You're saying you want me to believe in this uh, divisive system mm-hmm. that you have created you, where you say that you are for justice but you are actually a very divisive person. I call BS and I say no. To live with principles, particularly if you're if you are interested in Taoism and the Tao Te Ching, you have to have a stance like Lao Tzu. You have to have the strength to say, "No, I don't believe in your artificial system, and I'm going to leave because I live with principles. I know the way of nature. Why would I pretend to not know the way of nature if I know the way of nature?" So Lao Tzu left society. He let Confucius to do as he pleased with the with the world around him. Lao Tzu, Lao Tzu knew it was a it was an impossibility for people to come back to the realization of the Tao. Mm. So he left, and that's to live with principle, you know. And so we too have to live with principles, and that comes from knowing and accept and accepting the Tao as it truly is. And anything that's out of accord with that is just false and illusory. Now, this is not a dogmatic message. It's a message that I want to share with everyone that comes from a deeper level of meditation, a deeper level of awareness of reality. As Lao Tzu says, knowing constancy is insight. Mm. Once you have that insight into reality, into that reality is fundamentally one, then anything that's out of accord with that is just pure hocus pocus (laughs) from your perspective, you know what I mean? So that's where we need to get to. And and I I really feel sorry for the younger generations because they don't, get brought up with any form of spirituality anymore. So they don't really have any grounding. Their spirituality, as you said, is the idiot phone or the idiot tablet. And that's how they grow up yes. with that. And so what happens then when they get older, you, where, where you said you don't, you don't know what happens to them when they get older. I know what happens when they get older. They're addicted to the idiot phone and the idiot uh, tablet. And their mind is very attuned to that fake world the digital world and not attuned to the external world and so what happens when you try to take that phone or that tablet off them all hell breaks loose Mm. because that's their world that's the danger parents are putting their children in in not exposing them to nature that's what they will face in the future and that's the generation we are building it almost looks like these um young parents are breeding some form of disabled child, yeah. almost mm. because those uh, young, I mean, they, those uh, children will have some sort of 
disability, mm, mm. in a sense, how to really communicate with the people in in reality, mm, mm. how to function as an individual in a society, yep. or how to see the beauty in nature. Mm. This itself will be all unable yep. to experience for those yep. young children. They grow up too comfortable. And so when you, when you disrupt their life, all hell breaks loose. Yeah. And this is the difference, especially with older generations. And this is uh, what Lao Tzu had to contest with in, in Confucianism because people became very spineless because they, de- they depended on an external system. And because he lived with principle, he's not blown here or there by the, the, the changing tides of the society. He's just like, you guys are idiots. And so there's this thing that New Age spirituality have unfortunately brought in to the West where if you're spiritual, you have no spine and you don't live with principles. And this is ridiculous. As for, you know this as an Easterner because you are from the East. Because you know the Eastern traditions are not actually like that. And I remember once Sadhguru got very angry because someone was saying, oh, why are you like this and that? And he's, and he's like, what do you think? I'm a pushover because I'm into spirituality? <laughs> I'm not a pushover. I live with principles. And I'm free to say no. I'm that free. I'm free to say no and call BS on what you're saying. And I just go my way, and you can continue with your own hypnosis. <laughs> you know. People misunderstand the, the authentic spirituality, I think. Mm. Being a spiritual f- for those people is to be unreasonably kind to everybody, mm. unreasonably um, open to everything and everyone, mm. Mm. right? And... Yeah, I mean, that's nothing but being spineless, having mm. not having your own stance, a strong belief or principle. Mm. That's what it means, really. Mm-hmm. Being spirit, spiritual, meaning that, as you mentioned, you follow these certain <coughs> values and teachings yep. for yourself and for others as well. Mm. Follow your that dharma or Tao, that is being a real spiritual. Mm-hmm. When you detect some BS, you just got to speak your mind, mm. how that's not right, how that's not true. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you're being rude to that person. You're actually doing good for that person yeah. because you are pointing out what's, what's true and what's not. Yeah. Well, you do it in a manner that's kind. Like That's the way spirituality comes in. You can... You can say something to someone with kindness as opposed to being aggressive. Mm. You know, in this day and age, everyone's aggressive and angry about everything. Like they make up all sorts of things. And this comes from people being <laughs> overly comfortable. You know, they haven't really had any tough experiences in life. Yeah. And so that's where the problems occur. So you're not. So the thing is that we, we live in a day and age where people tend to another person's psychosis and hypnosis. Mm. And so when you live from the traditional knowledge of the East, you're not tending to other people's psychosis or hypnosis. If they come in, for example, like Hinduism is often attacked by outside forces and they just call BS on what the person or the foreign entity is trying to say about them. They say, no, look, we have our own way. Thank you for your concern, (laughs) but we we have our own way of living. Mm. And it's a very good way to to go about it. Why? Because the Hindu lives with principles. They, live, they have a spiritual foundation. They don't need your input. Mm. Your input is unnecessary. Exactly. Tend to your own concerns mm. in your own life. Stop worrying about other people. And you know, Lao Tzu, he's a, he's a big proponent of mind your own business. Mm. Taoism is a, is, a, is a tradition of minding your own business instead of getting involved in other people's businesses yeah. as we see in this day and age, right? So, And you wouldn't get involved in other people's affairs if you knew constancy if you knew the Tao, because you would have a level of impartiality and you would allow people to live as they choose to live. And so if someone is trying to circumvent that perspective, then it's, it's okay for you to say, no, 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 I mind my own business and I allow people, I accept the world as it is and I accept people are different. So stop trying to get me to raise my voice about a certain problem or this and that. I mind my own business. They can, they're adults. They can sort it out themselves. Why do I need to have an input about it? Again, that attitude, that strong stance is to have their sovereignty, yep. isn't it? Yep. That you alone stand by your own values and principle. That itself 
has its own power yep. and that empowers your sovereignty. Yep. Mm. You follow the law of nature, yeah. the law of universe. You're following the Tao. I mean, in following the Tao, what do you have to go out and do? The only reason you would say anything is if someone was trying to inhibit your spiritual path. Mm. You'd just say, look, sorry, mate, like, just mind your own business and move out of the way. I'm, I'm, I'm okay on my journey. Yes. I don't need you to, to convert me to some other religion or I don't need you to try and get me to think about certain other things. I'm com completely fine the way I am. Right. And there's a lot of people in this day and age who are, who are not confident enough to just say, I'm completely fine the way I am. Stop trying to change me. Mm. You've got the media, the government, corporations, and numerous social media, social media, numerous avenues trying to change you. Yes, Taoism is about getting away from all of those things and just allowing your life to be. Mm. So then, as you were talking about before, we can have this space then to understand ourselves. Yes, and then ultimately accept ourselves for the way we are. And see, a lot of the world. The religions of the world, the, the nations of the world, they want you not to accept yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we create a society and we create religions where we are at odds with our own humanity. And that's a big problem. Once you're at odds with your own humanity, your own intrinsic nature, then that's where all trouble begins. <laughs> where Taoism is leaning into, don't be at odds with your own nature. Yes. You know, understand yourself at a deep level and don't fight it. Mm. You know, don't fight certain natural inclinations you have. And you'll realize actually that your natural inclinations are not as perverted as what society is telling you. Right. What perverts your natural inclinations is the society itself mm. and the culture mm. because they promote sex, they promote violence, mm. and then that perverts your pure nature. If you were just up on the mountain, just with your significant other, just chilling out, you don't have a perverted mind. No. You are very content with the simple things. Yes. But see, the simple things, being content with the simple things doesn't drive an economy, does it? So. Yeah, for some reason, that is taboo to talk about, isn't it? That's taboo to talk about, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So in saying that, like we, we've gone through kind of the four progressions, haven't we? Yeah. And... As we were talking about with uh, being sovereign or being royal, as Jaffe Feng and Jane English say, mm -hmm. talk about, this means living up to the, the heavenly mandate for humans. Yes. So the heavenly mandate here, heaven meaning the course of nature, not heaven as in, in, a, in a place, you know, as in Christianity, heaven being that, that course of the world or the universe, so to speak. How? The Tao. Yeah. yeah, so that heavenly mandate <laughs> is the mandate that's mm. there for you. Mm. And so this relates to what we would call Li, mm. Li being organic pattern in Chinese, uh, meaning all of us have a, a Li, so a, a psychological imprint in our mind that makes you uh, skilled or easily adapt to a certain thing in life. It's almost like a genetic makeup. Yeah, <laughs> it is almost like genetic makeup, yeah. yeah. But it's something of a metaphysical yeah. value. Yes. But it is, in some sense, a genetic makeup as well. But we are all a cocktail of many things, aren't we, <laughs> as a human being? We're a cocktail of genetics, of, of karma, of th the metaphysics of the Tao, and we are an expression of all of that. Yes. And so, for example, you with music, right, you have a aptitude for music. So your Li, in some sense, is related to music in, in, in the multitude of forms. Mm. And likewise with other people, right? Like, so in this sense, like in following the heavenly mandate, if you follow the simple, if you simplify your life, you empty your mind cup, you start to become mm. aware of what your Li is. Right. Because you, are, you have the virtue. And so you are traveling down the river and you're not fighting the current anymore. And you are in harmony with the Tao. And I really like the last final line. And though the body dies, the Tao will never pass away. Mm -hmm. And that one says... The Derek says the self is no more without danger. Yes. So when you live by this uh, principle 
by the way of their way of nature, mm. then although your physical body is n no more, then Tao will never pass away. Tao mm. will always be with you. Be with you. Yeah. You are an expression of the Tao. Exactly. You became one with Tao ultimately. Yeah. Mm. That's why that we talk about this progression in it, because if you know, if you have knowing and you have acceptance, you have impartiality and you have sovereignty, this is how you, you emulate the everlasting essence of the Tao. Those four things are how you emulate the everlasting essence of the Tao. Mm -hmm. But again, if you're holding on to your time in this life and you're holding on to uh, your identity, which is passing, your identity, uh, uh, holding on to these beliefs, which are passing, <laughs> then you are going to have trouble in knowing, accepting, having impartiality and yes. ultimately sovereignty. Yeah. And so then you will never know the everlasting essence of the Tao. Mm. And so our role, according to this chapter, is to know those four principles. Yes. And then we'll free ourselves from the hypnosis of our identity. Yes. As you said, to be one with the Tao, even upon death. Mm. Yeah, truly knowing ourselves in the ultimate sense. Yeah. Mm. Lao Tzu actually says in another chapter, when death comes, you'll be ready. So guys, we hope you enjoyed and we'll see you guys next time.